Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Russell here, and you might remember that last week on Wednesday of last week, that was the last day that the House of Commons was in session where all the politicians would sit and debate different bills and different policies, and a lot of things happened before this deadline, including one thing that flew under the radar, which is the Canada Disability Benefit Act, a new piece of legislation that should, or I'll show you exactly what the uh, individual wording is here, that it seeks to uh, reduce poverty and to support the financial security of persons with disabilities by establishing the Canada Disability Benefit and making a consequential amendment to the Income Tax Act. And not a lot of people have been talking about this, but this legislation was introduced at the House of Commons before this deadline. So in today's video, we're going to go over the announcement from Carla Qualtrough, who is the Minister of Employment and Workforce Development and Disability Inclusion, what she has to say about it. And then we're going to go into the bill to find out what's actually going on here. And is there actually a new benefit that's going to be coming to people who are struggling with disabilities? But before we do, make sure to check out the links in the description where you can open up your own investing accounts or learn more about earning more, saving more, or investing with the Canada Money Mastery Program coupon code GROW for 40% off. All right, now let's dive into this announcement from Carla Qualtro and then we'll get into the fine details. I'm very proud to say that earlier today I introduced legislation to create the Canada Disability Benefit. This first of its kind Canada Disability Benefit would be modeled after the Guaranteed Income Supplement for seniors, which means it's intended to complement other sources of income for persons with disabilities, such as the Canada Pen Pension Plan or Provincial and Territorial Social Assistance. This benefit is the cornerstone of the government's Disability Inclusion Action Plan, a plan designed to help improve the financial security of persons with disabilities in Canada, among other objectives. It will be ambitious, evolve over time, and will have a focus on action. Together, the Canada Disability Benefit and the Disability Inclusion Action Plan have the potential to lift hundreds of thousands of people out of poverty, help persons with disabilities find quality work, create more inclusive spaces, and address long-standing inequities. Our hope is to trigger a generational change to income support that will become part of our broader social system in the same way that the CCB old age security and the guaranteed income supplement are doing. So obviously some positive words here from Carla Qualtro, as you'd hear from any MP who's introducing new legislation that they've just introduced. She says things like it's uh, ambitious and it's going to evolve over time, but what's actually included in it? Well, she did mention there that it's going to be based around the framework of GIS or the guaranteed income supplement for that currently seniors, many seniors may be using here in Canada. And with this GIS style, it seems like Caller Qualtro really wants to emphasize that, hey, this isn't going to be something that's replacing other benefits and supports that are already part of the social safety net system we have here in Canada, but will be in addition to this. It's, so that's that's some of the points that she's emphasizing. Another thing that if it's modeled after GIS, it may mean that it's only, uh, it's income based, right? So they're going to keep track of how much income you make each year, and then that'll determine how much this benefit is. That's what the GIS currently does, but we're going to go into the nitty gritty and the actual text of this Bill C-35, that's the uh, Canada Disability Benefits Act, Bill C-35, to find out exactly how much is set in stone and how much is going to be determined at a later date. So this is the actual text of the newly introduced Bill C-35, the uh, Canada Disability Benefit Act, and they say that it's an act to reduce poverty and to support the financial security of persons with disabilities by establishing the Canada Disability Benefit and making a consequential amendment to the Income Tax Act. Now this next section of the bill, it's labeled preamble. This is just essentially saying the reasons why they think that it's necessary to implement this bill. You can see here, whereas persons with disability often face barriers to employment, Canada's committed to the economic and social inclusion of persons with disabilities, uh, it guarantees persons with dis disabilities the right to equal protection, all of these points that make them believe that this is a good thing to bring in and sort of trying to convince the other parliamentarians who could eventually take a look at this to later vote on that this is a necessary bill. And they actually clearly set out what they see to be the purpose of this bill. And they say that the purpose of the act is to reduce poverty and to support the financial security of working age persons with disabilities. So they're making this very clear. They want it to be working age. Now, how they'll sort of line that up, it might be 18 plus and up to retirement age. Uh, but that uh, we'll, we'll find out later in the bill how much more detail it goes into. So it seems up to this point, they're clearly delineating why they want this bill to come into existence, but where they get a little bit less clear is on how exactly this is going to work. And Carla Qualtro says that this is by design, that they don't want to give too many details as of yet, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean here when we flip over to this bill. Because in this next section where they cover el eligibility and payment of the benefit, where you might be able to see how much, that's certainly the way it is in some other benefit acts, they say here that the eligibility is a person is eligible for a Canada disability benefit if they meet the eligibility 
eligibility or criteria set out in the regulations. Keep an eye on this word regulations because this is going to be all over the place in this bill. And the same goes for payment of the benefit. The minister must, in accordance with the regulations, pay a Canada disability benefit to a person who is eligible for the benefit, applies or has an application made on their behalf in accordance with the regulations and meets any other conditions set out in the regulations. So uh, we, what we're seeing here is that there's not a lot of information on how this is going to work unless there's more information in that regulations section. So let me show you that. So here we are in the regulations section of the bill. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, we've talked a lot about the difference between regulations and legislation, right? Legislation refers to different acts and bills like this, like this entire bill is legislation because it has to work its way all the way through the House of Commons process and then through the Senate before it actually becomes like a legal bill that's passed through and becomes a reality. Now, regulations, on the other hand, are things that are included inside of bills that allow decisions and changes to be made in the future without having to go through that lengthy legislative process. So in short, regulations are inside of legislation and those regulations allow you to change things about that legislation without going through the entire process again. So in this instance of the Canada Disability Benefits Act, essentially what they're saying is that anything in this regulation section can be changed at or determined at a later date without having to go through the legislative process if this bill were to be passed. And let's take a look at some of those things that that would include. Uh, the governor and council may make regulations on all of these different things. So first we have respecting the eligibility criteria for a Canada disability benefit. So the entire eligibility criteria is up in the air right now. The same goes for the conditions that are to be met in order to receive or continue to receive the benefit. The amount of the benefit will be determined at a later date via regulation, uh, as well as the, respecting the manner in which a benefit is to be indexed to inflation. So how much that benefit will grow over time with inflation, uh, respecting the payment periods, the amount to be paid each period, almost all of the details about this bill and this benefit and how it would be doled out in the future, well, it still remains to be seen. And you might be wondering, Russell, why they even put the bill through if there's no details on exactly how this would work. But it seems that Carla Qualtro says that the lack of information here is actually by design. Let's listen in on what she has to say. The legislation introduced today provides a framework for the benefit. It does not establish specific design elements. This is intentional. In the spirit of nothing without us, we will work with the disability community through the summer and beyond to ensure this benefit is designed with their input in mind. We will also engage with our provincial and territorial government partners who already play a central role in providing support to many Canadians with disabilities. I look forward to meeting with my provincial and territorial counterparts on July 21st for an initial discussion on the new benefit and to hear their views. I'm very proud that this new Canada Disability Benefit legislation is the latest action our government has taken. By working together, we can change the lives of hundreds of thousands of Canadians with disabilities living in poverty. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. So she says that this lack of information is by design so that she can consult over the summer with the disability community, as well as the provincial counterparts that would help in administering this benefit possibly to figure out exactly how it should work and what it should look like in the future. Now, I definitely think it's a good idea to get multiple opinions on how a benefit like this may work, especially from the people who it's going to directly affect, but it does make me a little bit curious on what the point of putting forward this bill in the first place was. Because this bill has so much in that regulation section that allows for the bill to be changed via regulation, not legislation over time, I think it's rather unlikely that other politicians and other political parties would support this bill once they get back into session in September. You see, if they were to pass a bill like this, then everything could be controlled and changed via regulation, which means it could be changed and implemented very quickly, yes, but also because of the regulations in this bill, if there were to say be a change in government, well, those changes to the benefit could be regulated away just as quickly, right? Imagine a world where uh, government implements this disability benefit and then down the road, uh, government decides that they don't want that benefit to be as high anymore. Well, they wouldn't have to pass a new act or a new bill through the House of Commons and have to debate and go through all of these uh, procedures in order to make those changes. Well, no, because this bill has this regulation uh, sort of guideline framework in it. Well, they could just make that change without having to consult basically anyone. So essentially what I'm saying is because this bill is so focused on regulation, well, it'd be easy to set up and move forward quickly on, but also it wouldn't be as set in stone for the future because the regulations could change essentially at any time. 
While I do think Carla Qualtro and the Liberal government likely do want to implement some sort of Canada disability benefit in the future, I don't think that their sights are too firmly set on this bill, especially given all the signaling that there could be an election coming up in September. If there were an election, well, it closes down all of the debates on current bills, including this new bill that was just introduced before their deadline, before the summer break. So if there is an election, which many signs are pointing towards, well, this bill would be scrapped entirely. So in my eyes, this bill is sort of more of a signaling of something that they want to do rather than something that will actually survive throughout the long term. It's likely if there were to be a Canada Disability Benefit implemented in the future, well, it may not be under the name of Bill C-35. It might be something different entirely with less regulations and more firm sort of uh, information about how the benefit will work. Now, on the other side of things, some critics might say that this is just virtue signaling from the Liberals saying, hey, this is what we plan on doing in the future without any firm dates or uh, deadlines for them to actually implement something like this. Some people might say that this could be used as part of an election ploy as it's coming up saying, hey, look at all the work we've been working on without actually taking, again, many steps to make that benefit a reality. But no matter what you think of it, I want to hear from you down in the comments. What do you think of this bill? Do you think it's a step in the right direction or do you think it's just more promises that may or may not be? Be fulfilled. Let me know down there in the comments. And while you're down there, check out the links in the description where you can open up your own investing accounts. I think that's so important these days. And if you want to learn more about investing, saving more, and earning more, again, there's the coupon code GROW for 40% off the Canada Money Mastery Program. Check it out and see if it's a good fit for you. And with all of that said, thanks so much for watching, everybody. I really hope this video has helped you out at least a little bit, and I'll see you next time.